Welcome to this digital press conference hosted by the Cape Independent Advocacy Group. Thank you so much for everybody who's here joining us this morning. The format of this press conference will be as follows. Firstly, Phil Craig will make a statement on behalf of the CIAG and will share the key findings of our recent poll. After that, we'll firstly be taking questions from the press and after that, questions from the public will be responded to. We just want to ask the press, members of the press to, um, if you do want to ask a question in the chat, just please identify yourself by first stating your name and also the publication that you're from. And without any further ado, I'm going to be handing over to my colleague, Phil Craig. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, uh, thanks so much. And thank you to everybody else that's, uh, that's joined us this morning. I'm just going to jump straight in and to uh, get on with the, the polling results. Uh, I'm going to re read the question using the exact wording which was asked in the poll and then announce the results to that question. I will then share with you the infographics which we've prepared that relate to that specific result. Once I've shared all of the results, I'll then make a short statement on behalf of the CIAG before taking questions. So starting with the methodology for the poll, Victory Research conducted the poll on behalf of the CIAG. The sample size was 1,080, was fully representative and comprised only adults residing in the Western Cape over the age of 18. The poll's margin for error is 5% and polling took place between 24th of July and the 14th of August 2023. And the first question we're going to share with you is about the direction in which South Africa is heading. And the question read, in general, are things in South Africa going in the right direction or in the wrong direction? Right direction, 19.6%. Wrong direction, 77%. Did not say or undecided, 3.3%. And this sentiment of negativity was shared by all of the three main race groups in the Western Cape. Then the second question we asked uh, related to uh, the Western Cape relative to South Africa and said, well, what about your province? Do you believe your province is better managed or worse than the rest of South Africa? Better, 62.1%. Worse, 31.6%. Did not say or undecided, 6.3%. And for this question, the majority of coloured and white respondents thought that the Western Cape was better run than the rest of South Africa, and a majority of black respondents did not think that the Western Cape was better run than the rest of South Africa. The third question that we're going to share with you dealt with the question of provincial autonomy, and the question read, next, I'm going to read you some pairs of statements. After I read each pair, please tell me which one is closest to your views, even if neither is exactly right. Provincial governments should be given more power to choose their own policies or provincial governments should not be given more power to choose their own policies. More power, 76.2%. Not more power, 20.8%. Did not say or undecided, 3%. And again, this sentiment of more or greater provincial autonomy was shared by the majority of all three race groups. The fourth question that we're going to share asked respondents in the poll to look forward one generation into the future and to imagine what South Africa would look like. The question read, looking into the future, which one of the following comes closest to how you think South Africa will look in 25 years time? South Africa will have solved most of its problems and life will have significantly improved for most South Africans. Conditions will have remained more or less the same or South Africa will have become a failed state and living conditions will be worse than they are now. Better, 30%. Same, 23.7%. Failed state, 39.6%. And for this question, black respondents were relatively optimistic, uh, thinking that conditions would either stay the same or get better, whilst coloured and white respondents were largely pessimistic, thinking that things would probably get worse. And we've got our first infographic now that we can share with you, which shares the graphic of how people think uh, the future of the Western Cape will look. So then moving on to our fifth question, which we're going to share. And this question deals with the referendum on Cape independence. And the question said, do you support or oppose the idea that there should be a referendum in the Western Cape 
to test whether people in the province would like the Western Cape to become an independent country separate from the rest of South Africa. Support, 68.0%. Oppose, 20.8%. Did not say, 1.9%. And we can share now our second graphic, which deals with the level of support for a referendum on Cape independence. Then moving on to the sixth question, which was then, do people support Cape independence? And the question read, now thinking again, do you support or oppose the Western Cape becoming an independent country? Support, 58.4%, oppose, 30.2% did not say undecided 6.7%. And for the first time, the majority of people in the Western Cape, beyond the margin of error for this poll, which is 5%, um, the, the, the majority of people in the Western Cape now support Cape independence. And interesting, also for the first time, support amongst the coloured community is now highest at 78%, and white respondents are now 62%. Uh, support has also increased amongst black respondents to 31%. So we have several infographics that we'd like to share that deal with this question. The first one, our third graphic, deals with the level of support for Cape independence now in the Western Cape, 58%. The second one, puts the level of support for Cape independence alongside the level of support for referendum in the same graphic. The third one then charts the growth in support over the three years that the CIAG has been polling at Cape independence in the Western Cape. The fourth graphic then asks, who is it that's supporting Cape independence? And actually, what you'll see from this graphic, which almost exactly represents or reflects our last poll, is that 69% of Cape Independent supporters are voting for the DA. And we hope that once and for all, that this will put to bed the notion that support for Cape Independence can be measured with who votes for the Cape Independence Party, which is a small uh, party that uh, we can see clearly that the vast majority of Cape Independent supporters are voting for the DA and the correct way to establish whether the people of the Western Cape support Cape Independence is in a referendum, which is the internationally accepted method. It's a single issue vote and it does not force people to have to choose between the DA, who they obviously think are a relatively competent government in the Western Cape and Cape Independence. And to emphasize this, our seventh graphic isolates DA uh, voters and to see what they think about Cape independence. Just wait for that to come up now. Uh, so we can see that 61% of Cape independence support, uh, support Cape independence outright and 79% of DA voters support a referendum on Cape independence. And then our eighth and final graphic on this particular question deals with, well, who are these people? Who is it? So we've dealt with politically who's voting the Cape Independence. This one dealt with, with racial groups. Um, and we can see their support for Cape Independence amongst all three race groups from Cape Independence. But by far, the, the two thirds of Cape Independence supporters are coloured. So moving on then to our seventh question, which now deals with the consequences of Cape Independence. And the question read, regardless of whether or not you support the idea of Cape independence, do you believe that if the Western Cape was an independent country, your quality of life would improve or worsen? Improve, 64.4%. Worsen, 26.6%. Did not say undecided, 6.7%. And the overwhelming majority of coloured and white respondents thought the Cape independence would improve their quality of lives, and a slight majority of black respondents thought that it would not. And now we bring up our ninth graphic, which deals with this question of quality of life. And then also our 10th graphic, which kind of gives the logical progression of why people support Cape independence in the first place. And here we can see 
you know, 77 percent of uh, voters think that South Africa is going in the wrong direction. 76 percent want more control of their own policies and destiny. And 64 percent believe that their quality of life would improve. And with those in such circumstances, it should be fairly easy to understand why people support Cape independence. Moving then on to the eighth question that we, we dealt with, we're going to share with you, and that deals with the subject of non-racialism. And I'm going to read the question again. Um, next, I'm going to read you some pairs of statements. After I read each pair, please tell me which one is closest to your views, even if neither is exactly right. I believe South Africa belongs to everybody who lives here, regardless of their race, or I believe South Africa is an African country and other races should behave as guests. Belongs to all, 64.8%. Other races as guests, 32.3%. Did not say, 2.9%. And here there was quite a stark difference between the races. More than 80% of white and coloured voters felt that South Africa belonged to people of all races. But somewhat alarmingly, 69% of voters in the Western Cape, 69% uh, of black voters in the Western Cape believed that other races should behave as guests. And this was up from 45% in our last poll. And we have a graphic to illustrate this too. And this shows with support for non-racialism in the Western Cape. And then the ninth and final question that we're going to show for you or share with you is why people vote for the party that they vote for. And actually, there were two questions here that we dealt with, and you'll see that they're linked. So the first question read, if provincial elections were taking place today, which party would you vote for? <coughs> Please excuse me. Uh, and then after they answered that, we followed up with what is the main reason that you would vote for that party? I would vote to support the policies and views of that specific party. I would vote for that party to keep a different party out of government. Or I would vote for that party because it's the best available option, the best of a bad bunch. And 38.9% of voters were voted because they supported policy, policies of uh, party policies of the party they're voting for. 17.2% were voting to keep other parties out of power and 32.3% were voting for what they believed was the best of a bad bunch. And interestingly here, uh, the political parties which had the most enthusiastic voters were the Freedom Front Plus at 91% and the EFF at 75%, whilst the, pa the parties who had the least enthusiastic supporters were the DA at 32% and the ANC at 22%. And our final graphic then deals with, in the context of the Western Cape, why is it people in the Western Cape are voting for the DA? And we can see that 32% are voting because they like their policies, 10% to keep the ANC out, and 42% because they believe the DA is the least worst option. <clears throat> so that concludes the key findings of the poll. And these results are now available on our website, which is www.capeindependence.org. We'd now like to share some thoughts around the implications of the results and to talk about what happens next. It has been clear for some time that there is now very substantial support for Cape Independence amongst Western Cape voters, and this poll once again confirms this. Two thirds of Western Cape voters now support a referendum on Cape Independence, and the clear majority support Cape independence itself. In a democracy, we simply cannot ignore this. So the question then becomes, what must we do? And at the CIAG, we believe the answer is simple. The established and best international practice is to call a referendum and to allow the people of the Western Cape to irrefutably demonstrate their democratic wishes on Cape independence. Cape independence is not going to go away. Support for it is growing significantly, and we simply have to deal with this question. And I'd like to take a few more moments just to pack this out. A majority of Western Cape voters have supported a referendum on Cape independence since 2021. The constitutions of both South Africa and the Western Cape explicitly empower the Western Cape Premier to call a referendum. The DA has tabled legislation in the National Assembly which seeks to tidy up the enabling legislation which governs how a provincial referendum would be called. 
And before the 2021 elections, the DA said that whilst they did not support Cape independence, they acknowledged that ultimately it was a decision for the Western Cape people to make for themselves in a referendum. More than that, and out of respect for the DA and its leaders, we've never previously made the details of this public. DA leader John Steenhazen personally promised myself and the CIAG that the DA would fix the referendum legislation and that they would call a referendum which included a question on Cape independence. It's now time for the DA to make good on their 2021 election promises and to call a referendum on Cape independence. We'd like to take this opportunity to remind the DA that the Western Cape government, which they lead, is obliged by the Western Cape Constitution to act in the best interests of the Western Cape people. 68% of Western Cape voters support a referendum on Cape independence. 64% believe Cape independence would improve their quality of lives. And the same number believe that conditions in South Africa are not going to improve. The DA themselves are predicting doomsday after 2024. In such circumstances, how can it possibly be in the best interests of the Western Cape people to deny them a referendum which would allow them to choose their own destiny? The separation of party and state is a fundamental principle of the South African constitution and a principle which the DA themselves have fought extremely hard to uphold where the ANC has clearly abused it. Principles sometimes come at a cost, and with Cape independence, the DA is now on the other end of the stick. We understand that the DA has national political ambitions, and the DA have reminded us at the CIAG regularly that 70% of their voters reside outside of the Western Cape. And to be clear, we support all attempts to unseat the ANC both nationally and in other provinces. But ultimately, that is a decision for the people who live in those provinces and in the rest of South Africa. Premier Alan Windy and the government he leads were elected by the Western Cape people to serve the Western Cape people, and they must now listen to the Western Cape people. The political interests of the DA must not factor in the fundamental question of whether the Western Cape people wish to remain a part of South Africa or whether they wish to break away and form their own independent country. And this brings us back to the question of what must happen next. I can now announce that six political parties and organizations have come together to jointly call for a referendum on Cape independence to be held on election day 2024. These organizations are the Cape Independence Advocacy Group, Cape Exit NPC, the Freedom Front Plus, the Cape Independence Party, the Cape Youth Front, the Swartland Axi Group. They will now write to Premier Windy and President Ramaphosa calling for a referendum on election day 2024 and we will be inviting members of the public to support this call by also signing the letter. A dedicated website has been set up for this purpose at www.capereferendum.org. We are aware that the referendum bill which tidies up the regulations around provincial referendums has not yet been passed by the National Assembly. At this stage, we do not intend to disclose why the DA has taken more than two years to table its own referendum legislation, but reserve the right to do so if it becomes necessary. In any case, it is of no real consequence. Our legal team are firmly convinced that Premier Windy can call a referendum, which is constitutionally empowered to do, using the existing Referendums Act into which his right to call a referendum can be read in. Regardless of this, even if the Premier genuinely believes he does not have the ability to exercise his unquestionable constitutional right to call a referendum, he can simply ask the President to give effect to his call since the existing Referendums Act explicitly enables the President to do so. So in closing, we want Premier Alan Windy to call a referendum on Cape Independence on Election Day 2024. With doomsday approaching, it is now time to ask the Western Cape people what they want and to allow them to determine 
their own future. In a democracy, the will of the people must count. Thank you. Back to you, Renee. Thank you, Phil. I just want to remind you once again that uh, the, uh, the a, a copy of the polling results, infographics, and also the statement will be available on the CIAG website, and it's linked in the description below that website. Okay, we'll now be taking questions to members of the press. Just a reminder again to please identify yourself with your name and also the publication that you're from before asking your question in the chat. All right, our first question is from... Andre Bietre, and he, the question is, what is the chance of a referendum ballot being in the 2024 <coughs> national elections in the Western Cape? Uh, thanks, Andre. Uh, and I, I guess the answer to that is we're about to find out. Um, I uh, Look, you know, I, I prefer to always give people the benefit of the doubt. As, as I mentioned in the statement, DA leader John Steenhazen personally promised me and the CIAG, I wasn't the only person in the meeting, a referendum on Cape independence and publicly alluded to that uh, when they when they announced their position on, on a Cape independence referendum before the 2021 elections. We know that for their own political reasons, the DA would prefer not to call a referendum on Cape independence. I think now we've brought that matter to a head. We've said it was promised. Uh, you're threatening us or telling us that doomsday is a likely scenario. We've now demonstrated that the majority of people clearly want one. So now there is absolutely no reason whatsoever. And in fact, it would be, in my mind, immoral not to call a referendum on Cape independence. So I think there has to be some chance that a referendum will be called on election day 2024. There's no reason why it can't be. Um, but you know, politicians are politicians, uh, and it remains to be seen whether whether the DA are going to act in the best interests of the Western Cape people, or they're going to act in what they perceive to be the best interests of the DA. Um, and uh, yeah, we, 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 I guess we're going to find out in the next few weeks. Thanks. Okay, the next question: Do we know if the DA will vote for or against the Western Cape People's Bill? Have they given any reasons? Well, they've they've stated that they intend to vote against the Western Cape People's Bill. Um, we don't know whether that'll happen. Actually, as an organisation, we have written to every single member of the Western Cape Parliament and actually reminded them of exactly what we said about in this particular um, uh, press release um, that the, you know they have a constitutional obligation uh, to act in the best interest of the Western Cape people. And we've asked every single Western Cape MP, regardless of their party's position, to actually examine their conscience and to actually fulfill their constitution, because each one individually swears an oath to uphold the Western Cape constitution. Um, and uh, we've asking, we're asking for MPs to abide by that oath uh, and to pass the Western Cape People's Bill. Uh, but at this point in time, we think the DA, the DA whip certainly will be asking them to uh, to vote against it. Uh, in terms of reasons, uh, no, no, they haven't is the honest answer. And and you know, obviously, they have this Western Cape Provincial Powers Bill. Uh, our position is that uh, these two bills should both be passed uh, and would work very, very well together. And um, the, the DA wants to pass their bill, and they want to uh, to vote down the Freedom Front Plus's bill, uh, which we think is 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 very, very foolhardy and certainly not in the best interest of the Western Cape people. The next question is from Elizabeth. How will independent Cape work under BRICS? I, I presume that, yeah, okay, so I'm presuming yeah. that's BRICS with a, <laughs> not mortar and BRICS. Uh, look, in, interesting to see, yeah, and, and I think uh, that's a very, very good question. The, 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 the world is, is, is fundamentally changing. Um, and yeah, we're having this global realignment, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's going to be one of the questions that the that the new government of the independent Cape of Good Hope is, is going to have to determine, uh, you know, where its best interests uh, interests lie. Um, so yeah, difficult for me to to say what that is because I have no authority to speak on behalf of, of a of a country that doesn't even yet exist. Uh, we are fighting for the Western Cape people to give them their democratic will, and and uh, you know ultimately how, how we that 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 country, this new country that we're going to create, uh, aligns is going to be a position for the government uh, which, uh, which which the people elect. Mm, thanks. Al Scorpio Perfecto is asking, <laughs> when will you ask nearby Northern Cape and Eastern Cape communities or adjacent areas if they want to join an independent Cape? Interesting question. 
Yeah, also a very good question. So um, primarily for, for well, for a number of reasons, but primarily legally and, and pragmatic reasons. Um, you know, our, our initial fight is for the Western Cape because the Western Cape exists as a government, as a border, and the Western Cape has habitually rejected the ANC. The majority of Western Cape voters have never once voted for the ANC. Um, and therefore, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, re a relatively simple argument to make. Um, but we do know that if we look at voting patterns of South Africa, that those patterns of, of, of people who habitually reject the ANC extend beyond the immediate borders of the Western Cape. And I think effectively, uh, once the Western Cape has has voted for Cape independence, um, then the next question will be, and it becomes a reality, then I think that's the time uh, that we you know, we would certainly love to see referendums then at municipal level along the border, so that the final border is part of those, because there's going to be negotiations. We have to understand that we're not going to have a referendum on election day, wake up the next day and be a new country. We're, we're going to have a clear expression of the democratic will of the Western Cape people, um, and that's then going to be a mandate of the Western Cape government government to 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 now move forward and to uh, and to, to to you know to pursue independence for us and as part of those uh, discussions i think the border is a is a critical question and we, and i'm absolutely certain that that uh, you yeah, know at least the southern part of the northern cape and the and the westerly most part of the eastern cape uh, based on voting patterns would want to be part of the cape of good hope and not remain in south africa Curtis Fincher is uh, the question that he has is what about the huge number of black people moving to the Western Cape? I saw statistics that it will be a majority in nine years. Sure. So look, so so this is obviously a very sensitive question, and I just want to be careful. So first of all, yeah, the movement for Cape independence is inherently non-racial. Uh, yeah, we're a non-racial organisation, and in the team that govern the the CIG, you know, you know, we have people of all three races. So so certainly, uh, you know, I, I it's always difficult in here to understand why people are asking the, the question. Uh, you know, that, that black people are not a problem. Yeah, you know, that they actually are fellow citizens, uh, and you know, the Western Cape has got three official languages and, and causa is one of them and there are many people who can trace back their heritage in the western cape for many many years and um, so you know this this is this is a fight for the western cape people it's not a fight for for white people or for colored people it's for all of us um but on the other hand you know law and order is has broken down in the western cape and if we're then talking about the the mass uh, illegal settlement of land in the western cape from people who've migrated to it and uh, you know and, and settled here illegally and and you know effectively deprived the people who are already here of uh, you know of, of of resources and and, and so on um you know, in particularly tax resources then that's problematic so, for, so our view is you know countries thrive um on 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 skill people and people coming in and, and, and building their economy uh, but they have to come legally they have to come through a normal process obviously at this point in time there's absolutely no issue with people migrating between provinces uh, you know we're all part of South Africa at the moment and there's free movement of people and um, but uh, people must come legally you know, so that for me is the is is is, is the big issue um you know and, and what we've seen is for the for sort of in terms of cape independence and we've seen levels of support increasing amongst all three race groups uh, over time and in fact um the, the most stable level of support is amongst is amongst white voters uh, and the highest increases in support for cape independence come from the colored community and then from black voters Finn has a question. During Brexit in the United Kingdom, the Tories did not support it, even though it was democratically voted for. Do you think the DA can actually make Cape independence work if they get re-election? Re I'm just going to read the question again. Do you really... Yeah, look, so, so I think so one of the questions, so, so if, I, if I'm understanding this question right, is in terms of, look, you know, one of the one of the challenges is was was that you ended up having a, 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 a conservative government uh, driving Brexit when its leaders of, of, of the of the conservative government weren't particularly in favour of Brexit. And, and, you know, and, and the people who drove Brexit would, would, would very definitely say uh, that they weren't happy with the way those negotiations were conducted. Um, and and I think that's a fair criticism, and it's a danger that we face here. Uh, that if we end up with the, with the DA uh, uh, as the Western Cape government leading the negotiations for for Cape independence, where would that lead us? Um, and all I can say is, as a movement, we're very very aware of that. We absolutely do have plans in place, but it would be premature to to, to talk about that. But it is going to be critical to make sure that any negotiations uh, that that form uh, the independent Western Cape are. Um, 
you know, are, are beneficial on everybody. And to give the DA their credit, and I'm often critical of the, of, of, of the DA on some issues, because I think, I think they're worthy of criticism on many of the things they've done around Cape independence. But they have been, you know, in many on other issues, particularly around provincial autonomy, very, very inclusive, very, very willing to follow this uh, all of society approach, as they call it. Um, as an organization we've engaged regularly with them on that basis so so my my gut feeling is uh, that they would act in good faith once the decision is made and and, and i think i would rather have have you know, this current da uh, bunch of, of leaders than, than the tory leaders um so I'm, I'm hopeful but it definitely is a danger it's an excellent question to ask and it's something we're very aware of and we'll have to manage very very carefully richard nixon is asking would western countries gain any benefit from an independent cape well, I, look, I think they would. Yeah, I think I think they clearly they would, and I think it's it's a difficult situation because I think when we start talking about uh, Western, that that becomes particularly in the in the current world quite quite provocative, um, because uh, you know the Western countries are changing at a, at a, at a sort of rapid rate, um, and uh, in many in many ways, there's yeah there's there's, there's a big difference between you know, what traditionally would have been Western and what's currently Western. Um, but I think look, you know, the, the Cape Independence clearly has a, you know would have strategic interest. Um, and I think uh, you know when, when we, we you know we do in, in, engage discussions with many many international role players because uh, international support is going to become critical at some point. Um, and without question, the international community is is aware of the of the political benefits of Cape Independence, and the, and therefore you know, people often say nobody is going to support Cape Independence. Well, you know pretty well of the of the countries that we've spoken to, and obviously we could never speak to the country itself. That's illegal. Um, yeah, they, they they can't interfere in other countries' internal affairs. But you can talk to politicians at parties and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we're yet to come across a, a, a country that, uh, that, that that hasn't been enthusiastic about the idea of Cape independence. It took me as, as a surprise when I first spoke to the first country. Now, now when I walk into a room and explain to 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 uh, an international audience about Cape independence, I expect that, that they're going to be overwhelmingly in support, and, and, and I'm very rarely disappointed. Lisa Fulgin is asking, in which part of the poll are Indian and other races grouped? So there, there is a section in the poll of, of Indian and other, but obviously there's a very, very small Indian population in the Western Cape. Um, in, in previous years, uh, that it's actually shown up. We ha it's, so you have this poll, is, for example, the margin for error of this poll is 5%. Uh, yeah, the Indian population is way, way, way below 5%, and, they, and therefore they may or may not appear in the poll. Now, as it happens in the first two polls, we had quite a few Indian respondents. In this particular poll, there were no Indian respondents, and therefore they, they don't appear in the poll because we didn't get any polling information. But in all honesty, uh, the, the sample size often for, for really small uh, population groups is almost irrelevant because the margin of error is then so large that it, that effectively it, it, it sort of you know, becomes slightly random. Um, so, uh, but yeah, they do, there is a section of, of, of uh, Indian, uh, Indian and other, or Indian and Asian, I think it is, and other, um, but, but there were no respondents in this poll that came from that population group. Jay is asking, do you have any existing indication of which countries would recognize I'm not sure if I recognize I'm sure. an independent Western case if a referendum results in favor of independence. Um, so, yeah, interesting one. Um, yes, we do, but, but unfortunately, I, I don't feel at liberty to, to 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 say. But I mean, I think you know, if you if you were to guess, you wouldn't be far wrong. I mean, yeah, the, the, I think it's you know the 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 um, you know the Western Cape and South Africa have, you know, have, 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 you know, taken fundamentally, you know, the, interestingly enough, you know, they're taking fundamentally different, different positions in, in, in global politics. Uh, and, and that automatically me is going to mean regardless of whatever we do in the independence movement, uh, you know, that, 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 that um, you know, there are going to be allies and 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 uh, and, and and opponents that are decided above our pay grade. And, and but I think if, if you if, if, if you guess you won't be far wrong. All right, our next question is from the Royal Bank 556. How would the rest of South Africa, such as Gauteng, be affected by the Cape, in, by Cape independence and will immigration be allowed? 
Uh, well, let's take the second half of the second question. Immigration would be encouraged, but it, because all all economies benefit from immigration, um, it, it, it's uncontrolled immigration that's always the problem. You know, because what tends to happen in uncontrolled immigration is is you end up with people who who um, have you know effectively often become dependent on the state and, and are there fleeing from other problems, uh, uh, often which are economic, um, and uh, and and sometimes you know and, 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 and problems that they voted for themselves not always the case um so you uh, so you have to sort of be able to you have to be able to control immigration but but you know good immigrants quality immigrants people who can grow your economy either through bringing skills or at times bringing labor uh, yeah, are, are beneficial to to the system um and so yes it would be encouraged but there would be a fair system that, that, that made sure that you know your people applied they got in and, and you know it should it should work very very simply um as to the rest of south africa I think the rest of south africa has a lot to gain from cape independence interestingly enough it's sort of, sorry, so so first of all south africa is no longer functional as a, as a as a state we've seen that it's you know not only are the, are the institutions breaking down but we're also going into this uh, coalition politics and I, and I think you know quite frankly the main political parties are trying to put lipstick on a pig um you know we, we we've, we've got this scenario where we can't form a government because we just fundamentally don't want the same thing and we're going to end up this totally ridiculous government which is people with really really you know vastly opposing is trying desperately trying to find some kind of workable compromise and we've just seen how difficult that is you know and, and we can see you now in this next election in 2024 you may well see a GP, Gauteng and uh, KZN fall under coalition control but the governments are going to be different as chalk and cheese and um, so I think first of all Cape independence is actually going to sort of start to 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 cause South Africa to 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 break up or to certainly become more provincial in in in, in the way that it works and I think that will be really beneficial to 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 people in provinces uh, you know where, where they can start to take more control of the, of their destiny um, and then I really hope uh, that, that you know beyond that then obviously as 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 you know imagine the plight of Zimbabweans uh, if South Africa hadn't been next door to sort of to to to, to become a crutch uh, and I think the West and Cape has a developmental role in the rest of South Africa. I think South Africa is just going to continue on going down its path. I think parts of it are going to be able to save themselves, part aren't, and then when actually it hits rock bottom, is going to be needing help and actually the western cape is going to always be a friend and an ally to south africa they're going to be our neighbors we're all going to have people on both sides of the border and actually a really high functioning prosperous western cape is is, is going to be very very beneficial indeed uh, to the and actually we can see that you know, if we just imagine the relationship of south africa when when zimbabwe went under and and just imagine that playing itself back out uh, hopefully without all of the uh, the you know the people as coming back to the initial question of people coming in, uh, across the border on mass you know, in an uncontrolled manner but actually obviously in a controlled manner that's a different kettle of fish yeah. again a question from jay for us regular folk how can we help to pressure the da into keeping their promise of including a question about camp independence in a referendum <laughs> Well, I, I look. I think this is going to go in steps, um, and you know, we, we, we're all very conscious. So, so I have to. Look Traditionally, I was a DA voter, so so I, I and I and I and I still have a lot of affinity for the for the for the DA and its leaders. So by no means am I anti-DA. Um, but at the same time, you know, the bottom line is, if you vote for an ANC government at this point in time, you're going to get a failed state. And if you vote for a DA government, you're going to get a failed state. But it's going to happen a little bit a little bit further down the line. Because if we can't control economic policy and we can't control the main levers of, of our country, then you know, we, we're just sort of fighting back a, a tide. Um, so I think let's just take this in steps. The first step is we put up this website, www capereferendum.org and, and I really hope that we can get vast numbers of people behind that and that will be the easiest and the first point to say to the DA look yeah, the polling says we want it here let's let's get all of us our friends it doesn't matter what we've done up till now sign that document and um, let's get behind this and let's put some real pressure on the DA to ask them to call this referendum if they don't then we're going to have to vote against them in 2024 and that is the reality there is no way of escaping that um and it's it, it, and, and actually we already have contingency plans in place for that so if the da don't support this call for a referendum then, then we will uh, oppose them in 2024 and we won't oppose them to try and remove them from government we recognize that the da have done a relatively good job of running the western cape people like 
on on you know on 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 balance the DA uh, and they desperately want to keep the ANC out of power. So under no terms are we going to try and remove them from government, but we are going to do everything humanly possible to force the DA to listen to its own voters. Because I mean to have a situation where 79% of DA voters in the Western Cape want a referendum on Cape independence and then find that the that the, the, the DA say well we're just going to ignore them and do what we want anyway is you know is is untenable and actually it's insulting and it's and it's putting the interests of of the DA and voters in the rest of the country over and above the Western Cape, which is where we elected them. And, and one of the things that I look, I, I like John Steen Hayson, but one of the things that John often says is, um, yeah, the only reason people want Cape independence is because how well we run the Western Cape. And I often remind him, well, the only way, the only reason you run the Western Cape is because the voters in, in the Western Cape are fundamentally different from the voters of the rest of South Africa and they've given you the chance to run it. So you have done a good job largely, but you've done a good job because we elected you. Um, and, you know, at some point in time, they have to listen to us. Alscopia Perfecto again is asking a question. When is the next Freedom March for Cape Independence and for pro KZN independence organizations to start working closely? <coughs> I recall there was something in Twitter that happened. Okay, good question. So look, I have to say, first of all, March is a really hard work to pull off. So people often say, look, and 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 and, and look, I'll be I'll be singing to the choir here or preaching to the choir. So I apologise. The people that are here listening to this uh, press statement are almost certainly the people who really put themselves out. But but in general, South Africans are a lazy, apathetic bunch when it comes to politics. And you and to get people out to to, to actually turn up and march is is absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's a huge, huge undertaking. And actually, we've done it twice. We've done it successfully. And um, we, you know, we'd love to do it more often. We'd have a march every week if actually South Africa were marches. But we see with all political parties, it, it, you know, it, it's not an easy thing to do. And actually, do it badly is worse than not doing it at all. So uh, we, there probably will be another march. In fact, there almost certainly will be another march. Um, but actually, then we've we've all got to work together to, to 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 put people onto the onto the streets and make those marches as successful as the last two marches have been. Um, when it comes to KZN, yes, we do from time to time talk to the KZN movement. Yes, there are stirrings in in KZN, and um, and in many ways they look to us for inspiration and talk to us because obviously we're a bit further down the the line and we and we've been quite effective in in our, in our purposes. Um, but we can't do we you know we, we can't do KZN independence for them any more than they can do Cape independence for us. Yeah, we've 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 got to do us and they've got to do them. All right, Joe Emilio is asking, um, there are fears of the ANC resorting to violence over Cape Independence. How would you prevent any violent techniques from ANC that would could derail the movement or success of it? Yeah, look, a difficult one. I'm, I'm, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm an optimist by heart and, and my, my gut feeling. Certainly we haven't had any, yeah, look, uh, we, we haven't had any problems at all so far from the ANC in terms of democracy. So, so I rarely give the ANC a compliment. Yeah, but but as I sit here and I, you know, I'm extremely vocal. Both we have as an organisation and I have personally, and um, never been threatened, never had any problems. Actually, and we've engaged with the ANC. They've always done so politely, even though they obviously hate the idea. And um, so at this point in time, now I accept that maybe they think, well, okay, you know, you, 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 at this point in time, everything's under control. And um, but I, I've always said. And it's sort of the same situation that, that you know, it really would be uh, politically it would be an absolute own goal for the for the ANC to use military force to to to, to force a section of the South African population against its democratic will yeah you know, to, to, to to follow you know, it, they would just have become the colonial power and I, and and for all their faults I just don't think the ANC are that stupid um uh, perhaps they may be uh, and uh, you know and and well we have to do something about it yes um are you know are there contingency plans uh, i can't say they're in place but i mean you know it, it, certainly we thought through all of the scenarios and and uh, um yeah, you know, we, we we would hope not to be caught unawares. Um, but ultimately, if the, if the ANC wants to suppress Cape Independence military with its with its armed forces, it can. You know, at this point in time, it can. Uh, and 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 that would simply delay Cape Independence for a year or two. Uh, you know, it would it would nothing would galvanise support for Cape Independence better than the ANC trying to prevent it at the bullet of the gun rather than at the ballot box. Andrew Bietre is asking. If Stian Eisen breaks his promise to you and we just get ignored like in the last two years, what are our options? 
uh, there will be political options on the ballot box in 2024 that I can promise you. So, so there will, so, so, so I don't want, I don't want to say what they are at this point in time. Um, but there, are, there are no circumstances where you will be powerless going into 2024. You will be able to vote Cape Independence uh, in 2024 in a number of different parties, um, and uh, so, so, and, and then it'll come down to voters. You know, at the end of the day, we can, we can only do so far as an organisation like the CIG. We can kick open the door. We can do the polling we can do the marches we can do the but ultimately you know if, if people aren't going to fight for cape independence they aren't going to get cape independence you know and and, and you know we're just a handful of people uh, you know at the end of the day there's a seven million people in the western cape there's 3.1 million voters ultimately they want it they'll get it and if they don't don't want it or they don't try hard enough they won't get it but there will absolutely be options and, and we certainly won't be found wanting on our side All right, go south online. Why no Cape Coloured Congress? Uh, so, well, look, I guess that's a question for the Cape Coloured. Uh, that's a question for the for the Cape Coloured Congress. They were invited. Well, I don't, I'm not sure if there are any more questions. Uh, I think we probably get, um, answered or covered most of the burning questions, um, unless there's maybe somebody who has a last question to ask. It doesn't seem like there are. Perfect. All right. Well, um, we've been almost come to the end of our press conference. Just before we end, we oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> just before we go, uh, we just want to ask everybody who do support Cape Independence to please register your support for this letter, which will be sent to Premier Wendy and President Ramaphosa. So please navigate to Cape Referendum website, which is also in the description below and go uh, register your support. This thing brings us to the end of this press conference. Thank you so much, Phil, and thank you so much for everybody who joined us here this morning. We do appreciate it. Thanks, Renee, and thanks everybody for joining us.